GPX-4 is a really simple mechanism for tracking and navigating on our adventures, but what exactly is a GPX file? How do we use it? And why does it get so complicated? Let's have a look. So GPX file has one of three points in it. A waypoint, which is gonna show you all the locations in no particular order. A route point, which has a sequence of waypoints to get you to a location. And track points, which shows you where you've been or someone else has been, then you can follow their path. Now, it's okay, this is as nerdy as we're gonna get, but just so you understand exactly what it is in the GPX file, is effectively a text file. This schema defines exactly what text is in that file to define the structure of the file. And then it's laid out like this, it has all the data in it, and it's effectively made up of three types of points. Let's look at the first of those three points, which is waypoints, and they are a single location or a map with a longitude and latitude coordinates. Now, they also have a name, obviously, and then anything else you add to that is additional details, which really helps. For example, uh, elevation is really important for us as adventure riders. So with that, I've got a map here, and we've got a wave, we've got a starting waypoint over here, we've got another one there, another one there, another one there, and then we're going to end up over here. So they are five locations set out on the map, and in its simplest form, we can use our GPS uh, to navigate from waypoint one, two, three, 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 three up to waypoint five. You know, if you want to go complete manual and you, you're the type of rider who wants to make it up as you go along, but you want to make sure you hit those particular um, points to get to where you want to get to, then that's the way to do it. Use your waypoints and simply set them by order of name. So I set a prefix of one, two, three, four, five, and then whatever the name is and then put that in, into your device and then you know, jump from one to the next one to the next one to the next one. However, what we can do instead is we can use a route point. Now, a route point is really simple. We start at point A and we move to point B, C, D, E. So a route point is a sequence of waypoints. They go in a particular order and it goes straight from one point to the next. Uh, read those particular waypoints in order so that when you get to waypoint two, it's automatically gonna then start showing you how to get to waypoint three. When you look at it in the file, it will contain five lines of code and that is it, right? So it's really, really simple. Now, for most devices, what they'll then do with that route is they will then find the road to there. So if you load that into your Garmin, what it will do is it'll pick up this route and follow it to that point and then follow it to that point, follow it around to that point and then same down through here and follow it to there. That green line is in the device, not in the GPX file. With a Zumo is you might say, well, I don't wanna take the easy road, I wanna take this more complicated road and it'll find that route path instead. So what a track point is, and I'm just gonna clear that for a second. Say if we're traveling between these two points, and we have a route that goes from there to there. We will then travel along this white line. As we travel that white line, our GPS device is going to start here. And then in a minute's time, whatever we set in the GPS, it's going to go, okay, you're now there. You're now there. You're now there. You're now there. And so on. That is a track point. So each of those individual spots in periodic timing is creating a track point. Instead, it will look something like this and lots of little dotted lines all the way along to our point. So with that and a track point, that's why our track points end up being really, really heavy as far as file size because there's so much data. So instead of there being two points in our data file, we'll end up with 200 points instead. So depending on how long you actually set that to record. If you only set it to record a point every five minutes, then obviously it uses a lot less. We've got our waypoint, waypoint, route point, track point. Right, they're, they're the different types. All right, so we're going from point A to point B. Now, a typical GPS device will find a way there and will find the fastest way. So this is actually a sealed road going up this way. So that's the way it's gonna to find to get there. However, we are adventure riders, so we're looking for adventure. Now this is actually Yango Creek Road, by the way, which is when we, if you saw a video of us drowning our bikes, that's where that is. Assuming you haven't got it set to avoiding dirt roads, etc., it'll find a way to our waypoint to where we wanna to get to via this road, via this point. Um, in, if you're using Garmin Tread, 
uh, it actually uses a thing called shaping points instead. And the only differentiation is between a route point and a shaping point, as far as a Garmin is concerned, is the shaping point won't stop there. Uh, a, if we put a route point here in a Garmin, it'll consider that a stop. And so it'll go, okay, you wanna go from here to there, that's, and I'll give you an ETA of when you get to here. And it'll give you an ETA for the final destination as well, but it'll consider that a stop. So that's the difference between a shaping point and a route point. I've thrown another term in there called shaping point, which is obviously not set in the GPS schema. So uh, that's something that is um, specific to Garmin and you'll find for all sorts of software that have their own specific things. So this is the first thing to consider with your device is what does it prefer? Does it prefer tracks or does it prefer routes? If you load it as a route and it's actually a track, then it gets really angry with you. <laughs> and it says, oh, I'm gonna try and find a route from here to 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 here and all the way along. And it's trying to find a route um, a couple of hundred times while it's loading the file. So if you ever find on Osmond uh, or open source maps, open source, someone, corrected me on that the other day, open source navigation or something. So I don't know what it sounds for, to be honest. Osman, that'll do. Um, if you're using that app, you need to make sure it's a track that it's following and not a route. If it's a route, it's just single points. If it's a track, um, make sure it's actually stored as a track and not as a route. So if you export out of something like um, Gaia Maps, it'll export a track as a route which is a pain in the ass. Um, and you can then run that through GPX, uh, gpsvisualizer.com or something like that uh, to clean it and turn it into a track. Just something to be really aware of because that caught me out a whole bunch of times. Uh, if you find that it's loading really, really slowly, trying to load a route in, or trying to load a track into there, it's probably a route. All right, so to recap, GPX file has three points in it. A waypoint, a route point or a track. The advantage of using a route point, there's actually a couple of advantages to this. One is you're putting in here and you're gonna start over here and you're gonna end up over there and you wanna go via these route points, right? So as far as the GPS is concerned, you've told it the parameters, the boundaries of what you want your trip to be it'll make up the rest. So say we've traveled all the way through to this point, through to this point, and we get halfway here, the creek crossings are way too deep, and you should probably turn around and go back, or just barrel through it if you want. Um, but it if we decide that that's something we shouldn't overcome, and instead we need to go back, great thing about a route point is as soon as we go back to this point and start finding another way, it'll find a way to go, okay, I know where you want to get to now, and it'll find a new route to there. So that's a great thing about route points. The other advantage is it's going to tell you the ETA to each of your points, right? So you're going to know, and this is one of the things I love about my Garmin Zumo, is if I put these route points in and someone says, uh, how far are we away from lunch? Then I've got an ETA and it's reasonably accurate to when we're going to get there. I also know how long it's going to take to get to the final ETA as well, because it's all in the same route. So it'll give me a you know, next waypoint ETA, but it'll also give me the final destination ETA, which means I then know how long we can stop for lunch. So if we're trying to get here by 5 p.m. roughly, and here it's telling me it's gonna take me another couple of hours to get to there, then I know that we've got an hour, hour up our sleeves to have lunch, right? So that's a big advantage of route points, is A, you can re-navigate, and B, you've got your ETAs, and they're probably a little more accurate than your tracks. So that's if you've got a track file that someone's given you that they've actually done the track with. The other is a virtual track file which has been created in a program like Gaia Maps. Now, if we've created a virtual one, so say for example, and I've got two routes defined here, I've got one that goes up over the road, and I've got another one that goes through the middle via off-road, this one over the top here, if we go to Google Maps or even uh, any other device, it's probably gonna give us a pretty good accurate number because the speed limits are quite achievable and uh, we know all the speed limits across the way, so we know what speed we're gonna be doing. So even in a virtual sense, it's gonna be pretty accurate. However, this being dirt and us being adventure riders, meaning 
It doesn't account for the amount of times we're going to pick up the bike and fall over in the sand, uh, the amount of times we're going to stop and look at a lookout and uh, put our drones up in the air and get them caught in trees. It doesn't account for any of that sort of stuff. So it's not going to be as accurate. So when we're using a Garmin, something like that, that does account for as much of that as it can, it might say, well, if you're on Adventure 4, for example, then your average speed is going to be a lot, lot lower. So therefore your ETA um, is going to be a lot less. Uh, so it could be more accurate. In that case, a route is probably gonna be a little more accurate than a track. Um, however, that's all the variables. So it depends on where the track file came from and how much data is in it. Um, as to which is going to give you the more accurate number on your ETA. I'm in Gaia Maps. This is effectively where I start. I will start with waypoints. I'll usually set my destination where I want to end up, where I'm starting from, and I'll call out a couple of key waypoints along the way that are either stops I want to make or just references. So I've got my waypoints. I'll then create a virtual track because at that point I can then get right into the detail and zoom in and go, okay, yes, I want to follow this particular um, route. I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. And that allows me to sort of spend the time, particularly looking at it on a desktop or a big touch screen. <laughs> Great thing about Gaia Maps is I can also load up different vision and get a bit more of an idea of what we're looking at. You know, is there something actually there? For example, I was doing one up around Singleton and then I found a, a route that sent me through here and I went, that's probably not gonna work. So this is where I'll spend some time getting into the details. Also, that's where I can work out where our fuel stops are and things like that. So I'm getting right into the detail. So with that, my process is to create a virtual map using waypoints and a track. And then I export that and I send that to my Garmin Tread app and then I create a route in the Garmin Tread app using that as a reference. Now I load that into my Garmin with two separate files. One is my reference file and one is going to be my route file. My reference file will be loaded onto the screen so I can at least see where the track is going, where it, I proposed we were going to go. Uh, and then I'm using the route file to actually do the navigation. So the route file will then, if it has a variation, so if I see the route go that way instead of this way, then I know that we've deviated from the original plan and I've still got the original track on there if I want to. So I'll follow it if we can. If we come to a blockage and we can't get past, then obviously we've got to follow the route and we'll know when we get back on the track because the track will reappear. So I use two separate files, one as a reference, one as the actual route I'm going to navigate with. All right, so that's the basics. So GPX file has one of three points in it, a waypoint, which is gonna show you all the locations in no particular order, a route point, which has a sequence of waypoints to get you to a location, and track points, which shows you where you've been or someone else has been that you can follow their path. So I hope that helps, it does, gives a like and all that sort of stuff. Don't forget, Motor Rides is a site dedicated as like a lonely planet for adventure riders. It's all about sharing rides. So all the rides that we've been on, any of the rides where it's not a tour, um, I've shared the GPX files on there with photos, videos, and all that sort of stuff. You can also share your own stuff on Motor Rides as well. We've opened it up to, to anyone to be able to create a free account and share your videos, GPX files, and photos, and so on, so that we all know where the great places are to go riding around Australia. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.